G'day everyone. Now if you're anything like me, then you've been searching on the internet and come across the phrases alveolopalatal and palatoalveol, alveola, and what did, what the fuck is this shit? How, these are the same two words in a different order. How can this be something different? And then how does, does retroflex come into all this? The answers to these questions are actually in the Wikipedia article. It's just that the Wikipedia article is a little bit difficult to interpret. So in this video, we're going to be covering these sounds here with direct relevance to English and Mandarin, though I'm so sure that there's some languages out there that do use these sounds that this could be useful for. And then later on, we'll cover some extra things related to phonology. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am not a phonology expert. This is just all based on shit that I've read on the internet. I could be saying shit wrong. Don't take what I say as gospel. In my defense, though, my girlfriend does think that I produce the sounds correctly, though, so <laughs> that must count for something. Anyway, so first of all, um, a palato-alveolar fricative. What is that? The way that you make a palato-alveolar fricative is you tell someone to be quiet. Shh. Sh, shoe, shop, sh, sh. That is a palato alveolar fricative. That's something that we, there's a sound that we make in English. That's part of English phonology. That's how we interpret generally sh in English. So, how does that relate to an alveolo palatal fricative and a retroflex fricative? So, first of all, the things that are similar between the two is that they're all three are post alveolar. Fricatives. That means that the point of articulation in the mouth, you can see in this diagram here, is in the post-alveolar ridge. That's uh, the part just behind the bump behind your front teeth. So that's what's similar between them. The thing that's different between them and what makes the sounds between these three different is the level of palatization of your tongue. So for the purposes of the explanation in this video, we're going to refer to them as the, <clears throat> the high SH, the mid SH, and the low SH. The mid SH being the one that we make in English, which is the um, palatal alveolar fricative. And then of course you've got the high SH, which is the alveolo palatal fricative. And then the low SH, which is the retroflex fricative. Retroflex fricative, yes. So what makes them different is the level of palatization. So basically what you need to do is make sure your tongue is contacting the same point at the top of your mouth when you make a shh sound, but you need to sort of raise and flex the middle part of your tongue so it contacts your hard palate, the top of your mouth, more or less, depending on if you're doing the high SH, the mid SH, or the low SH. So try and listen to the sounds that I'm going to make here and listen to how me moving my tongue higher makes a, I guess, higher pitch, more trebly sound versus moving it down lower makes a sort of a deeper, less trebly sound. Unfortunately, guys, this has taken a while to figure out. So just keep in mind when I'm making these sounds, my mouth remains in the same position, or at least should. It's only my tongue that changes and adjusts the pitch of the fricative. So here goes. So those are the three post-alveolar fricatives with differing levels of palatization changing uh, the sound. So basically in Mandarin, you have the high SH, which is represented by the symbol X. That's the Mandarin, that's the pinyin symbol for the palato, the alveolar palatal fricative. For example, Shit. that is alveolo palatal fricative. And so then the that's what's present in Mandarin. Then we've got the mid SH, sh, as in shu, that's what we make in English. And then we've got the retroflex fricative, which in Mandarin is represented by SH, keeping in mind that this is a different SH to the SH in English. Shu, 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 shu. So those are the three post alveolar fricatives. It makes much sense when you try and think of it as low, mid, and high. So this mid, 
low and high SH is quite relevant when we jump into now learning about the frickets. So I'm just going to prefix this by saying that when we're talking about the frickets, we're always talking about voiceless frickets, except for a very special situation in English, which we'll get onto later. We'll talk about voicelessness, voicelessness a bit later. Let's first talk about the aspirated frickets. So the voiceless aspirated palato alveolar fricket is ch, ch, cheese, chicken, ch, ch in English, which we're going to call in this situation the mid ch, um, that is a palato alveolar fricket um, that's aspirated, aspirated palato alveolar fricket. And so, like with the fricatives we were talking about earlier, we have, in the comparison between English and Mandarin, we have the mid ch, high ch, and low ch, with the same tongue positions as with the fricatives. So, compare these fricatives and then with the frickets. So, shh, 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 shh. So those are the, the fricatives. Now let's try the frickets. Same sort of situation, your level of palatization of the tongue is changing the pitch of the affricate. Keeping in mind that these are aspirated affricates. So what does aspirated mean? Aspirated means that you're making a burst of air with your um, mouth when you're making the sound. So let's, let me make it very exaggerated so you understand what I mean. Cheese. Let's try some other consonants. Kid. Top. Those are all examples of aspirated consonants because you're blowing air out of your mouth when you make those sounds. So that effectively explains those uh, aspirated affricates. It's exactly the same as the English CH. You're just changing the level of palatization of your tongue. Chu, 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 chu. So for an English speaker learning these Mandarin sounds, those were all relatively easy in terms of the uh, amount that the sound is distanced from English in that you only need one change in order to get from the English sound that we're very familiar with into these Mandarin sounds that we're not used to making. Where it gets a little bit tricky is when you jump into the unaspirated affricates. So this is where we have, have this little special situation where in English we have this um, affricate that is unaspirated, but it's voiced. In this table here, this is the only voiced sound. Now what does voiced mean? Voiced means it has your mmm, your voice behind it. As a quick example, the difference between an S and a Z sound in English is voicedness. So compare this. The difference between the, an S and a Z sound in English is the S is unvoiced and the Z sound is voiced. Zzz, mm, it has a voice behind it. So the this particular sound here is the English J, as in jam, juice. And it's two steps distanced from the other uh, unaspirated affricates that you find in Mandarin, which are represented by the letters J and ZH in that not only do you have to use a different tongue position, but you also have to make a consonant sound that is both unaspirated and unvoiced. So let's explain that. Let's get into a little bit more detail on that. Unaspirated and unvoiced. Now, if you look at the consonant sounds in English, you can loosely categorize some of them into what's called fortis and lenis consonants. Now, the fortis consonants in English are aspirated and unvoiced. The lenis consonants are unaspirated but voiced. So those are the two combinations that we are used to making when we make consonant sounds in English. Now, to make a sound that is 
uh, a combination of those that we're not used to that is unaspirated and unvoiced is a little bit difficult to make. So just as some examples of that, we do actually, in a very specific situation, make an unaspirated, unvoiced, a fricket sound in English. The concept of whispering is speaking without voice. So if you have a voiced consonant, um, for example, the voiced palato alveolar, a fricket, unaspirated, and you whisper that, you're going to take the voicedness out of that consonant. For example, let's try listen to this whispering. I'll say, I like jam, but whispered. I like jam, jam, ch, 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 ch. That is an example of an unaspirated, unvoiced affricate, ch, ch, specifically a palato alveolar one. So that is one situation in which we make an unaspirated, unvoiced sound. Let's consider another example. So for those that have learned Spanish, Spanish is an example of um, a language which has a lot of unaspirated, unvoiced sounds. So for example, if you take the Spanish uh, P, K, and T, and CH, actually, they're all examples of unvoiced, unaspirated sounds. So for example, consider my gringo pronunciation of the Spanish verb uh, words versus the true Spanish pronunciation. Tiene, tiene. Poco, poco, chino, chino, casa, casa. Those are all examples of how I'm initially pronouncing the word wrong in Spanish with my aspiration because I'm trying to produce an unvoiced sound and then I take the aspiration away from that pronunciation. Another example of some unaspirated, unvoiced sounds, we're going to jump over to my friend Nural for a second. Now, Nural is from Malaysia. Her native language is Malay. And if you jump into the phonology of Malay, you'll see that their consonants are all unaspirated. So when Nural started learning English, she was not able, she did not learn how to aspirate her consonants. So now when you listen to these English words pronounced, pronounced by her, you're going to hear the lack of aspiration in these voiceless consonants that she's producing. Pick, push, cash, car, test, three, cheese, chess. So those are all examples of unaspirated voiceless consonants. So to get a little bit more practice, which this definitely helps out in order to actually make the sounds, it's helpful to make use of an IPA soundboard. There's a couple online. And what it's helpful to do is use these soundboards to practice the difference between a voiceless and a voiced a fricket or any consonant for that matter. So let's try these frickets now. Cha, a cha, cha, a cha. Cha, a cha, ja, a ja. Ja, a ja, ja, a ja. In this situation, all these sounds on the soundboard are unaspirated. Aspiration is sort of an extra effect you can put onto a consonant. So in this soundboard, everything will be unaspirated that you hear. So let's take what we've learned here to go from producing a voiced unaspirated a fricate, like that in English, into producing a voiceless unaspirated a fricate. So let's have a go at this. Ju, chu, ji, chi, ju, chu, ju, chu, ju, chu. I believe I took the aspiration out of those fricates, and those should all be your voiceless a fricates too. And if I made the sounds correctly, it should sound a little bit like our guest native Mandarin speaker who will be able to demonstrate for us what these sounds actually should sound like. Plus, she's going to cover all the sounds that we were practicing before. So let's have a listen to that. Chu, 
Cool, so that's all the main learning done for today. So I'm going to finish this video off now with a few uh, phonology related stories that sort of tie into what we've been talking about today. So, first of all, when a native Mandarin speaker is learning English and they're trying to make, um, you know, I'm trying to say English words, when a Mandarin speaker tries to make a palato-alveolar fricative, or at least when they hear that sound being made in an English word like shu, what they'll actually do, because they're not practiced at making a palato-alveolar um, consonant, is they'll actually produce a retroflex sound. So when a Mandarin speaker says shu, they'll actually, actually say shu. They'll, actually, they'll incorrectly make a retroflex sound when trying to produce this English sound. And interestingly, when you ask a Mandarin speaker to make a shh sound, like to quiet someone, shh, instead of, they cannot make the palato alveolar fricative because that's not what they're practicing doing. Instead of, for some reason, instead of making a retroflex fricative, they'll make an alveolar palatal fricative. Now another story related to consonants, this time in the context of Spanish. Um, I was in Mexico for a short time and when I was there in the workplace, a guy asked me for my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel being MP3 Robo. And I tried to spell out my YouTube channel name. And so this is, this. watch what I was saying versus what he was writing down because he was writing it down on a notepad. M P tres R O P P O, and I'm like, hold up. You just wrote down P's, but I was just saying B's. What What are you doing? What had actually happened was I was not practiced in differentiating between voiced and voiceless, unaspirated consonants, which is the case in Spanish where you've got P and B. In both cases, unaspirated, as opposed to the English P and B, where the P is aspirated, so it's easier to distinguish for a native English speaker like myself. So I, in this situation, was not able to <laughs> produce this voiced unaspirated sound um, as a contrast to the voiceless unaspirated sound. In this case, it was a stop. Um, and... I couldn't make the right sound, so I had to like actually like take his notepad and pencil off of him and write down my channel name for him because I could not make the sounds in that situation. Anyway. I just hadn't had the practice. So that was very interesting. So that's pretty much it. I'm Like I said, I'm not a phonology expert, but this is the sort of stuff that I've come across. The other sounds to consider in Mandarin that are a little bit different to, to what you're used to in, in English are the... Aspirated and unaspirated, unvoiced alveolar affricates, which are represented in Mandarin by Z and C. Now those are kind of like tz, tz. It's like ts, cats, like you're saying the word cats, but except the difference is that I think your tongue is dentalized. I'm not very practiced at making those, but we'll ask Letty to jump over and make those sounds for us. Zu, zu. And there's a bunch of other sounds in Mandarin that aren't present in English that could use some explanation as well, but the explanation is a little bit more simple than what we've covered here in this video, which I can do at some point in the future if anyone is requesting it, but I'm completely open to any thoughts and opinions on what should be talked about, made a video about next, or maybe you just want to leave your thoughts. So I'm going to end it here. Leave a comment down below, please, on what you think, how you are going in terms of making these sounds, what your thoughts are in terms of Mandarin versus English versus other languages, anything you found out about phonology. It's all interesting. It's all really interesting stuff. So please leave a comment with your thoughts. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for today. So I'll see you guys next time.